I think we can um, start. So, uh, hello everyone, thank you so much for coming here. I'd like to start off introducing myself. Uh, my name is Tie uh, Jun uh, Chen. I've been working for many years, uh, getting involved a lot of things from low, low level technology such as hardware, OS, or virtualization you know, to edge computing, cloud native, new machine learning. Yeah. Uh, back here, you know, WebAssembly also one of my interests. Today I'm going to share uh, one of my exploration on WebAssembly you know, that uh, empower WebAssembly machine learning over diverse hardware storage, uh, but outside the uh, browser. I hope this is your interest too. So uh, let's go through the agenda. Uh, first of all, I will give you a, a brief introduction on WebAssembly, and then I will talk a bit more about uh, WebAssembly, specifically uh, at the current stage. Then I think we can uh, get on the same page. After that, I will introduce our uh, solution. It's about how to empower WebAssembly machine learning on a wide uh, variety of AI hardware accelerates. I also will show a demo uh, to uh, help you understand what it looks like. Um, at the end, just um, to see uh, what we do uh, next. So our WebAssembly, I'm um, talking about our WebAssembly. Uh, WebAssembly actually is not a programming language. I just picked this well-known uh, definition from uh, WebAssembly.org. Um, uh, it's defined uh, in the binary instruction format for a stack-based uh, virtual machine. So our WebAssembly uh, virtualization is implemented as a stack-based virtual machine. This stack-based virtual machine can emulate uh, a real CPU. Then we can run something that's in you know, WebAssembly by the code. That's WebAssembly. So our WebAssembly you know, is really becoming a great technology for the you know, modern application based on sandbox and schemes. Um, due to this uh, you know, high portability across different hardware, different platform, and small size, fast loading, and you know, enhanced security, etc., It has gotten noticed from the community of you know, IoT, edge computing, uh, even you know, cloud computing. So uh, many people even see uh, WebAssembly is the future of computing. Uh, for the past several years, you know, WebAssembly has been uh, growing. There are many things um, happening, as you see here. But I think, you know, one of the things it was mentioning here is also one of the uh, more interesting discussion that you know, since the uh, uh, beginning have attracted our attention is you know, can we really you know, replace the doc uh, with that WebAssembly? I think the WebAssembly just gives you a binary rather than entire environment, uh, unless you can move the entire environment into the WebAssembly. I don't think it's a you know, that re replacement for the container. Uh, moreover, just for that uh, this kind of uh, replacement, I would say, uh, like, um, despite uh, Docker uh, uh, rapid rise in popularity, uh, VM still have you know, have the capital growing, right? So, like, uh, Docker has not replaced uh, VM. We uh, similarly, uh, WebAssembly is not point to uh, display the container that came before it. But indeed, uh, WebAssembly is really a uh, compelling fundamental uh, approach to software development. So um, we should run WebAssembly at another wrong time, you know, side by side with VM and a container on um, the application platform. Uh, you know, we have some way to orchestrate that VM and container uh, with the cloud native principle. Now we also can orchestrate WebAssembly as well. Uh, we can do this with that container D. Container D is the most uh, uh, widely used you know, high-level container runtime. It just uh, implements the container D shim architecture that lets you mix and you know, uh, match the low-level runtime, now just including the WebAssembly uh, runtime. So WebAssembly uh, uh, container D shim embedded as uh, one library called uh, RunVasi. RunVasi just you know, um, operates as a container D shim sitting between container D and uh, WebAssembly runtime. So um, that being said, uh, they also embed that WebAssembly runtime that creates a WebAssembly uh, host and then executes that WebAssembly application. So with this architecture, it's possible to run WebAssembly on uh, Kubernetes. It's about how to bring WebAssembly to a cloud native. Uh, last page of this part. Um, so let's, let's go back to see how to run WebAssembly. You know, in the first place, WebAssembly was enabled to empower that web browser. Just you now, given the advantage as I talked before, you know, WebAssembly had already been introduced to run outside the web browser. So in this kind of case, we need you know, something including the WebAssembly runtime and that our uh, WASI. So for WebAssembly runtime, you know, WebAssembly the execution behavior you know, is defined uh, in terms of the abstract machine that model the program states, right? It includes that you know, stack on uh, which a record open the value and uh, con uh, control construct and uh, abstract that uh, store containing global states. 
So for each instruction, there's a rule that specifies the effect of its execution on the program state. So our WebAssembly runtime just facilitates all of the necessary um, interaction between uh, the stack on which run binary format and the whole uh, environment you know, in which that VM exists. Uh, VASI, uh, VASI just now stands for WebAssembly System Interface. Um, just as WebAssembly is a symbol language for conceptual machine, WebAssembly uh, needs a system interface for that conceptual operating system, not any single operating system. So this way they can run on different OS. That's what VAS is, on system interface for that WebAssembly platform. Actually, VAS is an API specification that defines the system interface between uh, uh, WebAssembly module and their host environment. When uh, running WebAssembly on the web browser, you need something like JavaScript to allow WebAssembly to interact with the outside world. The outside of uh, web browser, uh, we use that VASI. The VASI just now can run the same web module on uh, for the different WebAssembly platform. Uh, so uh, this is uh, VASI. Okay, next let's talk about uh, WebAssembly machine learning AI. Uh, uh, this is something here. Now, uh, like TensorFlow or JavaScript. Uh, TensorFlow JavaScript um, uh, can work on that web browser and Node.js. Uh, TensorFlow JavaScript just you now provides that um, uh, the, in, to provide that uh, WebAssembly uh, backend, uh, which uh, uh, offers the CPU acceleration. And the WebGL also provides the WebGL acceleration backend, uh, in which, that, um, in which a tensible JavaScript uh, can execute an operation on the GPU by running web uh, GL sheet program. For Onyx uh, runtime, uh, web actually, that was the Onyx JavaScript. That is the JavaScript library for that uh, running Onyx model on the web browser and on Node.js. So Onyx JavaScript has adopted WebAssembly and also WebGL technology for providing uh, optimized Onyx model in front runtime. It can run on CPU and the GPU both. But for WebAssembly, WebAssembly is adopted to execute that model you know, on the web browser on, on CPU at near native speed. Uh, you also have an option to use that on you know, WebGL on for the GPU processing. Just now, all Onyx uh, operators are supported by uh, WebAssembly, but only a subset of operator, uh, Onyx operator can be supported by that on uh, WebGL. Uh, next, WebDN um, is kind of that uh, the DN execution framework on web browser. It highly optimizes that DN models and executes them on that uh, web browser. Uh, it uses the you know, next generation JavaScript API and uh, WebGPU for GPU execution and WebAssembly for the CPU execution. Uh, Next one is one ca uh, compiler, it's a little um, bit different. Um, compiler is actually a web WebGPU compiler. It uh, um, builds that WebGPU runtime into TVM JavaScript runtime and calling back to calling back to a function from the WebAssembly module when you work on GPU code. Um, but anyway, it's still in the, that web browser. Okay, so now here I talked too much. You don't need to get into uh, every detail. Uh, you just need to know, just remember this. For this case, they run on the web browser. Most of these, they uh, use CPU acceleration. Um, but they can run GPU, but probably with WebGL, you know, which is the JavaScript API to use a GPU. You know, this API is designed for that you know, GPU processing. It's not suitable for that general purpose computation like machine learning. In addition, I uh, use a WebGL for that GPU, uh, can incur, you know, for, for that general purpose computing can incur the overhead cost. That's a problem, right? Another problem, now we're talking about the CPU, we talk about uh, in the GPU, but what about the other hardware set reason? You do not support them. Our last one uh, is special on uh, VASI neural network. Uh, it's special, it's dedicated to WebAssembly. Uh, it's that a uh, WebAssembly system interface for that uh, machine learning. Uh, um, this proposed a VASI API for performing that uh, machine learning inference. So with the WebAssembly program that want to use a host AI capability can access these capabilities through the WebAssembly core abstraction. It's defined its own abstraction, such as the machine learning backend and graphs and the tensor. So uh, now they expect someone or one to provide the different machine learning um, backend and support the particular uh, graph format. So I don't think you, know, it's, you cannot use that to support all of the hardware service. So back to me, I was just thinking we need a you know, better way to get machine learning AI into WebAssembly easily, especially uh, supporting uh, those popular AI hardware service outside of web browser. So let's say what I'm trying to do. Um, 
you know, actually, uh, WebAssembly uh, AI application can access to that uh, low level or low level or libraries of the host machine learning framework, such as the TensorFlow and PyTorch. Just for some limitation, you know, it works on the CPU. So I just think you know, maybe we can start from there. Um, it can uh, just turn around our requirement uh, to um, this question. Can we support a diverse AI hardware storage on machine learning framework at the low level? If so, our WebAssembly machine learning AI also can leverage to support the different hardware storage. So um, actually, I had this uh, kind of you know, exploration before. Just at the beginning, I didn't realize this can help you know, make out WebAssembly machine learning AI. But anyway, let's start off from this uh, project. So when I started uh, exploring machine learning AI, I thought there was some challenge around the user machine learning framework with the different hardware set rates. You know, from uh, cloud to edge, besides the uh, their GPU, you can find you know, uh, like AMD GPU or Intel GPU, Intel FPG, Intel NPU, XPU. Uh, Google has a TPU, cloud TPU, edge TPU. Uh, we have IPG, a lot of things. Uh, even uh, with the uh, evolution of remarkable AI large language model, more and more hardware yeah, so really have been introduced. So I would say you know, most the tech giants have you know, started designing and building their own hardware storage. Yeah, that's good. But the problem here, you know, these hardware storage are heterogeneous because they are from different vendors, they have different architecture. At the same time, you know, we have that multiple um, machine learning frameworks available, such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, Onyx, Cafe, MaxNet. But for any of these machine learning frameworks, you cannot find anyone can support all of these hardware storage. Or oh, even um, whenever this machine learning framework, it can support your hardware storage, but it may not give you best performance because it's a kind of that common general framework. It may not have all optimization specific to your hardware storage. I think this is some problem we need to take a closer look at. So I'm going, in our solution, I'm going to use a graph compiler. Um, so let's say um, the what's, gra uh, what's graph compiler. Um, in total machine learning software layout, um, I can divide that into uh, three layers in this way. On the top are uh, those machine learning frameworks. On the bottom are those low-level device driver and low-level library that operate uh, your hard device. Between them, a uh, graph compiler is sitting in between them. The purpose of a graph compiler is to optimize the processing of forward and backward pass over the computation graph. So it's just a perform of optimization at several levels. Uh, in other words, our uh, graph compiler maps the high-level computational graph to, uh, from deep learning framework to the operation you know, that's uh, executable on your hard device, right? So when comparing a computation graph or mapping it to uh, your hard device, this graph compiler just apply a number of optimization to uh, you know, accelerate your machine learning. Um, typically, uh, it includes something like um, kernel fusion and graph rewriting and uh, even some uh, optimization about memory allocation, this kind of thing. So uh, as you see here, you know, there are lots of uh, graph compiler available, uh, list, uh, like uh, open source TVM, uh, even the TensorRT and Intel, OpenVINO and AMD, Rockham, and Linux VCR and other. So for this uh, graph compiler, you know, um, if that is open source like TVM, uh, and it's neutral, it can support the different hardware accelerator. If that one from that uh, one hardware vendor, you probably you know, um, limited to uh, the vendor the hardware accelerator, but with better performance. That makes sense, right? So I'm going to now enable this graph compiler. Uh, here, I'd like to take TVM an example to uh, elaborate a bit more. So uh, TVM just optimized the deep model um, uh, from, um, to, uh, to more effective use of diverse hardware platform uh, from CPU uh, to GPU and to IPG to other, okay. So um, the main compilation of uh, process, uh, the main compilation process of TVM consists of uh, import and low and coaching. Import, just import the deep model built by the PyTorch or TensorFlow to that intermediate layer or you know, TVM to represent the intermediate reputation. In the TVM, uh, relay is a high level intermediate, uh, intermediate reputation. Uh, lower just you know, convert the high level intermediate reputation to the low level intermediate reputation. Coaching is about memory allocation and hardware you know, executable uh, program generation. This is about the TVM. Uh, other uh, graph compiler just now similar. I'm going to leverage uh, this graph compiler to build our solution um, to you know, support all of um, those popular hardware set reads. Uh, oh, sorry. So, but I'm not sure if I have noticed this. This graph compiler is more like a 30, uh, more like a 30-part software. 
um, I mean, you know, this graph compiler and this machine learning framework are being uh, developed uh, independently and uh, at different paces. So we need to consider how to enable this graph compiler into machine learning framework seamlessly. So this is my solution. So I really uh, intended to uh, boost machine learning by enabling this machine learning framework with this graph compiler, but seamlessly. So we have uh, this uh, machine learning uh, boost some system. With this server system, uh, we can work as being you know, backend and automated. I mean, I don't want to introduce any additional efforts uh, to you uh, just because of you know, this graph compiler or just our framework itself. So it just turned out, uh, finally, uh, this is transparent to users. There is, there is no any code change to your native AI application. This also such a universal cell uh, architecture. So, I mean, um, it can be you know, easily um, extended to support more uh, framework, more graph compiler. How can we make this? Um, basically, uh, built into the graph compiler. And then with our server system, I introduced uh, one interpol to uh, that machine learning framework. So with this interpol, we can intercept machine learning framework's API at the wrong time, and then just pass it down and let this backend graph compiler take real machine learning operation. This high-level architecture is a solution. Um, there are few blocks representing different uh, logic functionalities. Uh, we can start from the computer load. At first, I just deploy the system agent. This agent can help us connect some uh, hardware um, platform configuration, like um, your, uh, your AI hardware accelerator, uh, CPU number, and the memory, and other, even uh, CPU type. Because in some cases, we can leverage CPU to, do, uh, to uh, accelerate machine learning, uh, like we can use Intel AVX. After that, uh, we, according to this information, uh, we can enable that uh, graph compiler. By default, I use TVM uh, because TVM is neutral. It can support you know, different hardware accelerators. But indeed, uh, in some cases, uh, um, your hardware uh, accelerator, like in the GPU, um, it can support multiple that graph compiler. Like you can use TVM, you can use in the TensorRT, you can use other. In this case, uh, you can reconfigure that through our controller. Anyway, uh, after that, our manager um, just enable Interpol to uh, your uh, machine learning framework on your platform, uh, PyTorch, uh, TensorFlow, whatever, we support them. With this, uh, when you run your uh, AI application on top of the machine learning framework, you know, we can intercept that. Uh, we can do something with the graph compiler, like uh, compile that model to that intermediate reputation, and even run the graph runtime to do machine inference. I will talk in uh, detail on the next page. Uh, besides, we also have something uh, like cache mechanism to you know, save restore or intermediate reputation. Okay, I, I'd like to talk a bit more on that uh, Interpol. Um, the runtime Interpol is key to our approach. So um, basically, it's targeted to uh, those uh, machine learning, uh, key API or machine learning frameworks and the map this uh, API from a uh, machine learning framework to that uh, uh, backend graph compiler, essentially. Let me give you an example on just you now talk about uh, uh, TensorFlow. Um, uh, the TensorFlow, those machine learning frameworks, uh, including TensorFlow, um, support that two languages, C++ and uh, Python. We support them both. Anyway, um, let's think of one that tends to follow based AI application. Typically, it should first call API load model or load weights to load your pre-trained model, and then call another API predict to do machine learning inference. So we just figure out some way at the runtime we can redirect <coughs> load model to our customer load model, predict to our customer predict. In our uh, load model, we can retrieve your model. We have some way to <coughs> pass your model automatically to connect some necessary uh, model information, like um, model type, model input type, model input shape, model output shape, and so on. With this, this information, we can compile that model into that intermediate reputation needed by the graph compiler. Uh, we also load, preload this graph run, uh, that intermediate reputation at the graph runtime. Next, uh, in our predict, uh, we will use the preloaded graph runtime to do real machine inference via your uh, input and get the output back to TensorFlow and back to uh, your AI application. I think that now you can understand uh, why I'm seeing oh, it's transparent to you that there's no any code change. Um, yeah, just as I said, we support C++ and Python. Now, we can do this uh, at Python level uh, with some uh, Python tips, language tips. Uh, the work for, uh, in the case of C++, the workflow is the same, just at a low level. Uh, again, you know, our you know, enable the graph compiler, but we uh, compile that graph compiler into you know, that shared library. 
And then we are loaded this library into that you know, AI application process or memory space. And then we uh, inject some code to all those low level library uh, uh, machine learning frameworks to, uh, to, you know, to connect them uh, between that machine learning framework and our graph compiler. So basically, our solution now can support um, this, this thing. Um, like uh, we support uh, the TensorFlow, PyTorch, or even Onyx. We also support some uh, modern server system uh, in, used in production, like uh, TensorFlow Server, Torch Server, and K Server, and even Ray, you know, that popular distributed Python for machine learning. Um, we enabled uh, those popular, hard, popular graph compiler, um, TVM, OpenVINO, or even the TensorFlow, even uh, Zilinx, uh, uh, VCR, and Rockham. Okay. So with this kind of support, you can imagine, we really can let your native AI application run on any hardware service, from CPU to GPU, uh, from different vendors, GPU, IPG, and even other. Um, we also introduced another technology on uh, remote CUDA. Um, um, in some cases, you may not have them a local accelerator. So with this, we can trick your AI application to think you have that one. On that, we deploy our WebAssembly AI solution. I think this is uh, very useful. Uh, just think about some potential user cases, like edge AI. You know, uh, most edge devices are resource constrained. And uh, it's hard to install those uh, powerful AI accelerator because of the limited install space, limited uh, the power supply. So with this, we can bring that uh, um, machine learning down to the edge side. Even back to the data center, in some cases you might want to you know, that's a migrate a workload, but you just have some host you now which may not have AI yeah, has service. It's also you know, useful. Okay, next let's see uh, how uh, I extend that to support WebAssembly machine learning AI. It's simple. Uh, I think you know, it's easy to understand with our previous talk. Um, Oh, well, uh, it likes this. So again, with the WebAssembly runtime, uh, your WebAssembly AI application can talk to you know, the uh, low-level uh, libraries of the machine framework on the host, but just for some reason, it only works with the CPU, right? So now, um, with our own system, when you run your, um, we, we start our own system, when you run your WebAssembly AI application, our system can find that, just hijack that. Uh, hijack that uh, we enable that according to your hardware service to enable the appropriate graph compiler and then build that graph compiler into that shared library uh, with our, some of our helpful function. And then we just you know, load the library into uh, the AI action processor memory space, as I said, right? And we can inject some code to the low-level library of machine learning frameworks uh, to you know, map the graph compiler, uh, map that uh, machine learning framework API to that uh, graph compiler. So with this, you can see uh, we really can let your native uh, web server AI application you know, run on the underlying AI head of storage, um, no matter what kind of head of storage you deploy in your platform. Next, I want to show a demo of um, the web assembly. This, uh, this web assembly um, can be um, accelerated by backend TVM or one of the graph compiler, and then finally it can run that uh, CPU successfully. So you, you have to open a two terminal shell. Okay, on the top, I just use this uh, the SMI to show I have the in the GPU on K twelve they will install this platform. It's low end GPU, but it's fine our demo. On the bottom, uh, you see uh, I already built everything into that container. It's just you know start that. So I uh, also uh, open uh, two uh, other terminal shell. Uh, so on the bottom, uh, I manually start our backend server. Um, usually I make this auto start on here just for our you know, de demo. On the bottom, I will uh, have one uh, web server application. So, um, Basically, um, this WebAssembly application trying to load the model to recognize the image. But you know, just remind you, uh, this uh, WebAssembly application just can work on CPU. But uh, now I will show you now what's, uh, what's happening with our approach. 
So I will run this WebAssembly AI application On the top, you can find something, right? You can see some of that symbol, uh, name or symbol that address, that's a certain system already hijacked the process. It is trying to find out uh, what's that API uh, we should you know, uh, inject the code and, and also we should go back and we should you know, uh, where we should go back uh, with the information. And then we just incorrect some assembly code to that uh, low level uh, library interface uh, machine learning frameworks. This is the first stage. So uh, with this now, um, just now as I said, uh, we can now uh, intercept this machine learning framework API, right? So next, when this WebAssembly AI application called that API load model, we intercept that. I will pass the model to now to now connect the model information. Uh, you can see uh, something, right? Uh, I know uh, this model input some model some model information like that the model input name and the model input shape. Should be here. So uh, with this information, we also know this uh, GPU. You know, we can uh, call that TVM to compile that model into that uh, intermediate repetition needed by that TVM. So I mean, here we have everything what we need to compile that model. It's just you know, we will call TVM to compile that. Uh, you see, our TVM you now start compile on uh, compiling this model. It takes some time, but don't worry. This happened in that load model, not in that predict. It do not have any impact for your machine inference performance. Also, it's running very fast. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is that, uh, uh, what uh, happened uh, during that first uh, API load model. Um, in that uh, next model, uh, in our, our um, predict when uh, we just use that uh, preload graph runtime to do uh, machine inference, we will input uh, that image and then get the result back to your web AI application. So now you can see um, we can let your um, AI application, even it cannot support that GPU, we can let that run on GPU successfully. Okay, so after that, I want to see this. So, you know, basically, WebAssembly can offer such a universal or binary running on different architecture, different platform, right? Now, with our approach, um, um, WebAssembly can offer such a universal WebAssembly uh, binary, machine learning binary running on any hardware circuit. Uh, what's next? So, I'd like to add some of my other exploration on machine learning to uh, this uh, approach. Uh, one is uh, it's about uh, now to uh, introduce that uh, GPU sharing on fraction. You know GPU is uh, very expensive, right? No matter where and how you get the GPU, you buy them directly or you just you know, get them from a cloud provider, provider the GPU rental service, it's expensive. So, but on the other side, you can find uh, we actually we don't use the GPU efficiently according to some surveys and reports. Okay, so we need to make this better. Uh, this is the one of the things I want to do. Another thing I want to uh, get this into that read um, to support more user cases. I think that's all. If you have any questions. I cannot hear, so. Oh, source code, right. Uh, um, how to say that? You know, I just left my company. I don't know what's the next plan. Sorry? Is this uh, in GitHub? Is this online? Is this no. Um, we intended to make this open source project just you now for some reason and left uh, my company, or VMware. I, I really don't know what's going to happen with this project. But uh, I just feeling <laughs> maybe it's not, they don't care about this project. It's my feeling. I don't know.
so sorry. Um, what kind of sorry? Oh, yeah. um, I, I was just asking, uh, are there any other projects at other companies or other work in this space that you're aware of that's doing similar things, like trying to extend WebAssembly off CPU across and be hardware agnostic? Oh, because okay, so maybe oh, that's the YCN as I mentioned there. YCN mm -hmm. uh, is from that's all uh, YCN is from that WebAssembly SIG, WebAssembly CIG. You know, they want to build that proposal to support machine learning. But I just I said I don't think you know you can get this to support you know, all different hardware servers even in long term. Mm. You know. okay. This is why you know, I use this because uh, we know web server is very suitable for some uh, cases like uh, IoT edge device. But back to the edge device, we you have a heterogeneous yeah hardware server. Mm -hmm. So um, we cannot avoid that. I think that this will be, will be you know, straightforward to easily to get your web assembly you know, support in the yeah, no matter um, what, kind of, what kind of hardware in your platform. Okay, thanks. Let's, ha let's have you go back up because the cameras are recording, so they can't see you. Okay. Does anyone else have any other questions? Yeah, can you expand on that a little bit? I didn't um, get the uh, the differences with uh, WASI NN versus this approach. What are some of the advantages of this approach uh, that you were just commenting? Oh, the one teacher, right? Uh, I, I think the one is uh, just trying to solve this problem of um, how to uh, quickly to support the different hardware accelerator and with the best performance. And uh, I think the the advantage, another one I want to mention is you, know, you don't need to modif uh, modify your native AI application. Mm 